Happy anniversary guys. Today marks one year of our YouTube channel. And if you've been with me from the beginning, thank you. I appreciate you. If you're new here, I also appreciate you. So today I wanted to make a chocolate cake out of fresh milled flour so we can celebrate together our one year anniversary. So let's get to it guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is get two sticks of butter and set them out to warm up in room temperature. Okay, so to start out, we're going to use 210 grams of soft white wheat. And if you prefer to make your recipes by volume, like cups and things, I'll go ahead and put a link to the recipe in the description box below. That way you can print it off and have it in weight, volume, whatever you prefer. So let's get to milling this. Okay, we've got our 210 grams of the soft white wheat. Just gonna go ahead and mill that. And here is our flour. And to this flour, we're going to add a quarter cup of cornstarch, or you could use tapioca starch or whatever kind of starch you wanna add. And this just makes for a lighter, fluffier flour. It turns it into, I guess, cake flour, if you will. Okay, and we're just going to stir that together so that the flour and cornstarch are all combined. All right, and we're gonna need a half a cup of butter. And I'm gonna melt this, but this is actually just shy of a stick of butter because this is what I had that wasn't in my freezer, that was already in my refrigerator. So it's just a little shy of a, a stick of butter. And I'm going to actually melt this down and pop it in my microwave. I'm gonna melt it just a little more. And to the flour, I'm going to add two thirds cup of cocoa powder. Now, obviously you could sift all this, but I am showing you that you could still make a good cake without sifting out the bran and the germ, and it'll still be delicious. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of baking powder and about a half a teaspoon of salt to balance out the sweetness. Alrighty, and we're just going to just mix all of these together till they're combined. And I just, at this time, want to make sure I don't have any big clumps in my cocoa powder. Mix it till it looks all incorporated together. All right, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side and we've got a second bowl for our wet ingredients. And this is the melted butter. And then this is a quarter cup of oil. Now remember I was light on my butter, so I went ahead and just add a little extra of the oil. Hopefully that will even itself out. <laughs> All right, and then there's one cup of cane sugar. I'm gonna do two thirds cup of brown sugar. We're going to add about a tablespoon of our homemade vanilla. This is our homemade vanilla, and if you'd like to learn how to do that, I have a video for that I can link below. or will put a little card here. And I'm gonna add three eggs. And 
And then I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Okay, and this is a half a cup of milk, whole milk, and a half a cup of buttermilk. Well, my homemade substitution buttermilk, but you could also use a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of yogurt or a half a cup of kefir, or you could even do a half a cup of sour cream, which I actually wanted to use sour cream today, but I completely forgot to check to see if I had any. <laughs> And we're gonna add a teaspoon of vinegar and you won't taste the vinegar in the cake. It just elevates it. All right, and I'm going to take and mix up these wet ingredients till they're completely combined. And you could use your mixer for this if you prefer but I have my mixer busy doing some other things. <laughs> I wanna make sure that the brown sugar clumps are mostly broken up. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my dry mixture and pour it into my wet mixture here. And we don't wanna over mix this. We just wanna make sure everything is all combined together. Over mixing it can give us a dry, chewy, tough cake. And typically with a cake that you're making, you would just pour this right into the pan when it was ready and bake it. But I actually recommend that you let this sit for about 20 minutes or so before you pour it into your pan. So instead of preheating your oven at the beginning, I would say once this is all mixed, go ahead and preheat your oven and let this sit. And while that's preheating, this can start absorbing those liquids. And then you can put them in the pans and bake. want to get make sure I get all this dry flour off of here and you can already start to see some of these bubbles coming up to the top and popping that's basically a reaction between our leavening agent which is our baking soda and baking powder and our acid which is either our buttermilk sour cream yogurt or vinegar whichever you chose to use for your cake, you'll see that start to work. Okay, I don't wanna mix it any more than that. I'm going to let this sit while I preheat my oven. And while I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my cake pans. So I'm gonna set this up here and let that just work its magic. Okay, I'm going to attempt to draw one of these on here so I can line it. <laughs> okay, I had to locate a pencil first. We'll see. Ah, mostly. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut that out. best that I can here. If it's slightly smaller, that's okay. We don't want it to be bigger though because then it will roll up on our edges of our pan. Okay, I'm hoping I can get another one out on this side. Yes. I may have to adjust this and that's fine. I don't have any fancy cake decorating stick.
stands or anything like that. So I'll show you how I just, I actually, I do have little piping bags. I might use that or I might use my spatula or Matt might decide he wants to do it. So I guess we'll find out when it comes time to frosting the cakes, how we end up doing that. I don't want any of these little pieces in our cake. Okay, let me check for fit real quick. Okay, that'll be good. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna spray my pans on the bottom first, then put my paper on. And you wanna make sure you spray it really good because you don't want it to stick. I'm gonna put one paper down here. And after that's on there, I'm gonna spray this again. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the second pan. Make sure you get it down in those cracks. But surely you could also use the, I know that they have like a baking mix where you can mix up flour and shortening or flour and butter and brush it on your cake pans. That'll actually probably work better, but this is what we're doing today. <laughs> okay. All right, now that this has been sitting, See if we can do this without spilling. Okay, I'm going to put half into each pan here. Let's see how that goes. It smells like cake. Okay, I think I did a decent job equaling those out. Okay, and then these are gonna bake for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven, but you're gonna wanna test it with a toothpick to make sure that they're finished. Okay, so it's week nine, I believe, on the cabin edition, and we're only working on this for a day or two this week because we're headed out of town for a little while while we wait for the siding to be delivered. So we had to order that before we could finish the outside. So you saw last week the inside um, was pretty much complete. So now we're working on the deck on the outside on the front, and then we'll be working on the siding when we get back into town. So I'll go ahead and show you that. And he, he put the lights up in here, and then he's gonna end up putting the gable there, and then of course we're gonna end up siding it all so it'll look all one and cohesive. Okay, they're out of the oven, and we're going to let them cool in the pans for a little bit until we turn them out. I'm so excited, guys. Let's check in with our toothpicks. I wanna eat it so bad, Mom. Okay, that looks great for that one. And we've got a clean toothpick. So I'm gonna let these cool in their tins for about 15 or 20 minutes and then we will turn them out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I only have one cooling rack. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one out and then we'll cool the second one in a little bit. And then this is our parchment paper and we'll just peel that off so it can cool finish. Look how shiny and delicious. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just put this one on a plate here. Hopefully I can do this without breaking it. 
success. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this one in the refrigerator so it can finish cooling, and then I'll turn that one out. See if we can do two for two. Oh, yay, success. And we'll let this one finish cooling, and then as soon as they're completely cool, we'll be back to go ahead and frost the cake. Okay, now on to the chocolate buttercream frosting. All right, to make this buttercream frosting, we're going to use two sticks of butter that has been softened, and remember we got that out earlier today. And we're gonna whip that up. And we're gonna use my handy dandy Christmas spatula. And we wanna make sure that we get this off the sides of the bowl, otherwise it's not going to aerate everywhere evenly. And we wanna whisk this until it becomes lighter in color and really fluffy. Okay, and to this, we're going to add, we're gonna start out with two cups of powdered sugar. And whisk this in slowly at first. Okay, and we're gonna scrape those sides down as well. You can see in here how it's not fully incorporated. I hope you can see. Okay, and to make this chocolate, we're going to go ahead and add we're going to go ahead and add in our cocoa powder. And we're using about a half a cup of cocoa powder. And we're going to put this in slowly the same way we did the powdered sugar and we may add more powdered sugar in. We'll just taste it and see what we want for the flavor. Slowly. And just like we did for the vanilla part of the buttercream, we want to scrape the sides down to get all the cocoa powder off the sides so that we can incorporate that. Okay, and we're gonna add just a pinch of salt to balance that sweetness out. And two teaspoons or so of our homemade vanilla. And scrape the sides down one more time here. And the last thing we're gonna add is just a touch, maybe one to two teaspoons, up to three teaspoons of whole milk or heavy cream. And then mix all that together. Just gonna make sure this all comes out of the beater here. And I'm gonna give it a little taste. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half a cup of powdered sugar more, which means I may add a little bit more of the milk in there as well.
Okay, I got the approval from the family that this is the appropriate sweetness. So I'm just gonna, after I scrape the sides down, whip it one more time and it'll be ready to go. Okay, this is ready to go into the piping bags and ice the cake or frost the cake. Okay, so now I'm going to take this delicious chocolate buttercream frosting and put it into a piping bag. So I saw a little tip if I take one of these little disposable type piping bags and put it down into a big cup that I can just fill straight from there. And I was actually pretty pleased with how this worked. That's the first time I had tried that. So also thank you to those in the comments in previous videos that have let me know this little tip. I learned that from you guys. Okay, and once I have all the frosting in the bag here, I'm just gonna just twist it around so that it doesn't come out the back. Um, when Matt does this, he has a little band that he puts on the end, which I couldn't find, so I just made do without. I'm just gonna cut the end off of this, I don't know, probably about three quarters of an inch or so, so that I have a nice size hole. I'm not really gonna use a tip here, I just want um, a nice, even placement of the frosting. So this is the first layer of my cake and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this frosting in the center portion. As you can see, I needed to slow down a bit. <laughs> so just fill in those little areas and then I'll put the second layer on. And then I'm going to just line those up as best as I can and just put the rest of this frosting or at least most of this frosting on the top. And then I'm gonna smooth it out with my spatula, my Christmas spatula, in fact. <laughs> um, but I don't have an offset spatula. I don't have one of the rotating cake pans. I don't have any of the special things for cakes. I'm not actually a very big cake eater, but Matt loves cake and always has loved cake. So we still make them in this family, but I don't have all of the equipment because I'm not making them every day. So space is precious around here. So I don't always have enough room to keep things that I don't use often. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you can see in my videos, there's a lot of like camera movement. <laughs> um, we do live again in an RV and a small space and our floors are a little bit soft. So if anyone is walking around when I'm trying to film or even myself or even my little dogs will move the camera a bit. And I apologize for the shaking. I've tried to do things about it. There's nothing I can really do short of kicking everyone out of the house while I film a video, and I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so we'll just have to kind of learn to deal with a little bit of the camera movement. I do try to cut it out in a lot of my videos when I notice it really badly, as long as I'm not cutting out something important. But As you can see, I just smoothed this around and then I'm wiping off the plate and ta-da, it is revealed. Thank you for joining me on our anniversary video. I had fun and I hope you did too. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll find out what new content I'm putting out next. Thanks for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Happy anniversary, everybody. There's your bite. Mmm, I don't normally like cake. It's pretty good.